Hello everyone. Today, our group will present to you the condiments and seasoning around the world. Due to their vast amount that is present in the culinary world, it is impossible for us to cover every one of them. And so instead, we will choose a few that is popular and the ones that we find interesting, and we'll tell you in depth about what we've known so far. But before we get into the specifics, let's tackle the general information about what condiments and seasoning are and why we use them. So the term condiment and seasoning is used pretty interchangeably across the culinary world. In order to really know what is the distinction between the two, I have to ask Wikipedia to provide me with an answer. And so what I found is that condiment is usually refers to something that is added towards the end of the cooking process while seasoning is added towards the beginning or during the cooking process. So one example of condiment is like ketchup or mustard you add it on your hot dog, while seasoning is something like a spice mix that you add it in the sausage blend of the hot dog. But that's pretty much what is the distinction between the two. For the rest of our presentation, we will treat the condiments and seasoning as one big category because some can fall in between the two, like soy sauce, for example. Generally, it is pretty difficult to kind of put condiments and seasoning into one category. I try to put them into food types like veggies, fruits, meats, and fish, for example, or by texture that it gives to the food like a sauce, a spread, a dip, or a powder, even by new uses like in appetizer, in a snack, in a main course, or in desserts or by different cuisines around the world, Asians, European, North American, South American, or African. But it's really difficult to find one size that fit all the condiments and seasoning. But this show you like how diverse and unique the condiments and seasoning is compared to other food ingredients like meat or veggies or fruits. In terms of why we use condiments and seasoning, um, the three common reasons I can provide to you is that it's used to impart specific flavor, it's used to enhance the texture, and it's used to evoke a certain aroma to the dish. But I think people are pretty familiar with these three concepts, so I want to uh, divert your attention to the next two that I'm going to mention, which is the nutrient content and health properties. Condiments and seasoning are naturally uh, rich in antioxidants, vitamins, and fiber because most of them are derived from plant sources, which people and especially nutritionists are telling everyone to hey, eat more of these. In terms of the health properties, fermented products like kimchi, natto, and sauerkraut has probiotics that are really good for your gut microbiome. So recent studies about Wesella I suggest that consumer to eat more of these products because Wasella is actually has many benefits. It secretes bacterial cytochemical such as hydrogen peroxide and organic acids to inhibit growth of other pathogens and micro foreign species. It can also treat certain cancer and skin diseases and due to the low occurrence of violent strands it is considered safe for a majority of the population. So what I mean by violent strand is um, the occurrence of E. coli, the pathogen, and the commonly occur E. coli in our gut. So there's very little occurrence of that virulent strand with Wasella. And then we often find many antimicrobial and medicinal chemical compounds in a lot of spices. For example, piperin is the main chemical molecule found in black pepper, is found to treat nausea, indigestion, and has anti-inflammatory properties. Cinnamaldehyde, which is extracted from cinnamon, can treat respiratory tract infection and can also inhibit growth of listeria and salmonella, the common food pathogens. Curcumin has similar effects and is extracted from turmeric, can treat anxiety, hyperlipidemia, and on top of having anti-inflammatory properties. So you can see 
if as long as a consumer understand the nutrients and the health properties that condiments and food in general can provide to them, we will rely less on using antibiotics and using supplements to improve and enhance our health. But that's pretty much it for my part on the condiments and seeding general information. Now we proceed with the more specific condiments that my friends and my teammates are going to present to you. Hi everyone, I'm Tong, and now I'm going to introduce the condiments that are from Asia. Asia is considered to have made great contributions to the cuisine in the world. The cuisine in Asia always has complex flavors, and each of them has its unique delicious taste. People even think that the flavor of Asian food is beyond sweet, salty, sour, or bitter. Based on the history of Asian countries, the flavor of food in Asia strongly relies on spices, herbs, and condiments. So here is a list of condiments from Asia, and they are classified based on countries. For example, we can see that fish sauce, oyster sauce, and soy sauce are from China, and the fish sauce is also called liquid umami because of its strong flavor. Miso, rice vinegar sauce, wasabi, and pangzhou are from Japan. The picture shown on the left is the wasabi that we can always see in the restaurant. People always like to eat it with some raw fish or seafood, such as sushi and sashimi. The gochujang is a kind of chili sauce from Korea, and the kikan manis was from Indonesia. Nowadays, it is also known as a sweet soy sauce. Okay, now I'm going to introduce the oyster sauce because it is my favorite sauce in cooking, so I want to talk about it in detail. The invention of oyster sauce was actually an accident. Back in 1888, a man called Li Jingsheng ran his food stall in modern-day Guangdong province to sell oyster soup. Well, he forgot the oyster soup on the stovetop and let it cook for hours. The oyster soup finally became a thick brown paste. Instead of discarding it, he tasted it and he found it sink into deeply savory and umami flavor. Therefore, he decided to sell it as a rice seasoning to the customers. Then it started to get more and more popular in China and even all over the world. So that was the first version of oyster sauce. This picture is the nutrition fact label of an oyster sauce product. We can see that there is not too much nutrient in the oyster sauce. It has low fiber content, low protein, low amount of vitamins and minerals. Also, it has no cholesterol and a small amount of fat. Well, it has a high level of sodium and it is also considered to be the only mineral in oyster sauce. Therefore, too much oyster sauce is actually not good for our heart and blood vessel. Oyster sauce is popular because of its fresh taste. Sometimes people will choose to use it to make salad because of its low calorie. The umami taste can give people an appetite for the people who want to lose weight. The compounds that are responsible for the umami taste in oyster sauce are glutamate and inosinate. Many fish and shellfish are high in these two compounds, especially inosinate. They have a synergistic effect. Therefore, when they work together, they can boost the umami flavor. So, when the oyster sauce is made using oyster extract or oyster soup, the umami flavor is mainly from glutamate and inosinate. The chemical structure of glutamate and inosinate are also shown on the left. As the traditional way of making oyster sauce takes a really long time and high price, nowadays the oyster sauce product is basically a mixture of caramelized oyster soup, salt, sugar, and soy sauce thickened with cornstarch. MSG and caramel coloring is sometimes added to the product. Nowadays, some companies even replace oyster extracts with brine to reduce the cost. In this way, the product is not related to oyster at all, so it's better to choose the products from a big company when we buy it. These are the references I used. And now, let's move to the next part. Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine and I'm going to introduce the condiments of Africa. So as we all know, Africa is made up of many countries. Different countries have various cuisines. Traditionally, the cuisines of Africa use combination of local available fruits, several grains and vegetables, as well as meat and milk products. In order to go with all kinds of foods, Africa also has a variety of condiments. Okay, now I'm going to talk about some famous condiments from Africa. 
The first one is called Dura. It is an Egyptian condiment consisting of a mixture of herbs, nuts, and spices. The second one is Shio. It is a hot sauce from Ghana which is made of green chili peppers. There is also a Mauritius condiment called Mazabro. It is a spicy combination dominated by red chilies, together with garlic, oil, and salt. Another condiment that is very similar to it is called Harissa. Harissa is North Africa's favorite condiment. It is a Tunisian hot chili pepper paste. It is most popular as a condiment in Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, and Libya. Recipes for Harissa vary according to household and region, but the most basic components are hot peppers, salt, garlic, and olive oil. Chili peppers were imported into Tunisia during the time of Spanish occupation in the 16th century. Harissa has been part of the cuisines for nearly as long. Harissa is traditionally used in sandwiches or with couscous and meats, such as beef, poultry, lamb, and goat. Harissa can also be added to soup and stews. Now I'm going to talk about some benefits of harissa. Firstly, eating spices can improve our metabolism. The spice-induced metabolic boost can temporarily increase metabolism by 8%. Secondly, adding harissa to our food improves our digestion. Also, harissa is low in sodium as compared to other hot sauces, which is great for people with high blood pressure. Besides, harissa is crammed with vitamins and minerals, such as vitamin E, vitamin C, vitamin B6, vitamin K, iron, copper, and manganese. Harissa only has 46 calories per tablespoon. It also contains very little fat and carbohydrates, and has no sugar. Last but not least, Harissa's ingredients are all sources of antioxidants, which protect cells from free radical damage. Now I want to talk about capsaicin. It is an active component of chili peppers also one of the most effective metabolism booster. According to studies, capsaicin makes blood vessel relax, which could lower the blood pressure. Capsaicin adds the most flavor and function to harissa. The chemical structure of capsaicin is in the background. Finally, let's talk about the making process of harissa. For home consumption, you just need to throw all of the ingredients into a blender and process until it forms a smooth mixture just as the picture on the right shows. Then, place in an airtight container and store in the fridge. So that's it, and let's move on to the next person. Hello everyone, my name is Natalia and I am presenting the continent of Europe. There are several commonly used condiments in Europe such as Dijon mustard, balsamic vinegar, Worcestershire sauce, aioli, as well as mayonnaise. Mayonnaise was invented in the city of Maon on Minorca in 1756 by the French. It was named mayonnaise in honor of the city. Mayonnaise was initially made of cream and eggs. Then the cream was replaced by olive oil. After some time, the great French chef Marie Antoine Carême created a lightened recipe of mayonnaise by mixing vegetable oil with egg yolks into an emulsion. Nowadays, his recipe is used in many countries of the world. Regarding the nutritional aspects of mayonnaise, one tablespoon of regular Helmut's mayonnaise contains 100 calories and 10 grams of fat. Therefore, it is classified as one of the most fattening and calorie-dense food products. As it is constituted mostly of fat, it is recommended to consume regular mayonnaise in small amounts or opt for a fat-reduced mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is often added to sandwiches and burgers, as well as to many dishes, such as potato salad and any other type of salad. Mayonnaise can also be added to a chocolate cake, where it replaces oil and provides an exceptionally moist and tender texture. 
The flavor and texture of mayonnaise varies among countries and brands. In Europe, it has a slightly sour flavor, while it becomes sweeter with some mustard flavor in North European countries and very sweet in Scandinavia. In addition, mayonnaise generally has a vinegar and egg yolk smell. Mayonnaise represents an oil in water emulsion where the amount of oil varies from 65 to 85 percent. Its standard ingredients include vegetable oil, egg yolk, water and vinegar. Each ingredient plays a specific role in uh, the emulsion of mayonnaise. For example, eggs are important in emulsification, stabilization, flavor, and color of the product. In fact, the emulsifier lecithin contained in the egg yolk forms and stabilizes the oil in water emulsion. Then, acetylenes such as acetic acid or vinegar and citric acid provide flavor and enhance the shelf life of the product. As an acetylant, vinegar has an important effect on microbiological stability of mayonnaise. Vinegar lowers the pH, which provides a higher stability of mayonnaise. The pH of mayonnaise should be maintained below 4 to prevent its fermentation and spoilage. Moreover, Sequestrants such as calcium disodium EDTA and citric acid prevent oxidation and generation of rancidity by binding heavy metals in the mixture. But finally, some added salt enhances flavor and acts as a preservative agent. The appearance and consistency of mayonnaise depend on its making process. First, Oil is mixed with other ingredients in a tank. Then, the spray mix is transferred from the tank to an emulsifying machine where the oil is, is subdivided into small droplets from 1 to 5 micrometers in size to form a dense structure which generates a high viscosity oil in water emulsion. Finally, the produced mayonnaise is transferred to a filler where it is put into containers and the mayonnaise is ready. Thank you. The culinary identity of Central and South America varies widely from region to region. However, there are certain similarities in the staple condiments and seasonings used in Latin American cuisine. For instance, avocados, first domesticated around 5000 BC, were dispersed within North and South America by Mesoamerican migrants as climate conditions became more favorable. As a result, many separate cultures independently created a condiment consisting of pulped avocados seasoned with sugar, salt, or lime juice used for preservation, which is ubiquitously known as guacamole. Many South and Central American cultures have their own variants of guacamole, usually eaten with tortilla chips or spread on hot foods. For example, guasaqueca is a popular meat sauce of Venezuela made from salt mashed avocado mixed with olive oil, peppers, onions, parsley, and vinegar. While there are a handful of different avocado cultivars in Central and South America, the Has variety is most used for guacamole due to its smooth, creamy texture and cold tolerance. Nevertheless, guacamole is becoming an increasingly popular ethnic condiment, which is observed by growing avocado imports worldwide. In the U.S. alone, the average consumption of avocado products per capita increased from 1.1 kilograms to 3.6 kilograms between 2001 and 2017. Generally, one major contributing factor to this surge in demand is the growing awareness of the potential health benefits attributed to this condiment, such as the reduction of cardiovascular disease and promotion of beneficial HDL cholesterol. Additionally, guacamole is an excellent source of vitamins A, C, E, and K, as well as potassium and magnesium. Considering guacamole consists of 72% water and 6.8% dietary fiber, this condiment improves both the flavor and nutritional value of food at a reduced calorie cost. Furthermore, guacamole is nutritious fat-wise as it consists of 71% monounsaturated, 13% polyunsaturated, and only 16% saturated fatty acids. Of these fatty acids, oleic acid is the most abundant. Lastly, it is worth mentioning that pureeing avocado helps release monounsaturated fatty acids into the food matrix, 
masking the undesirable texture and flavor of dietary fiber and improving nutrient bioavailability. Pulped avocado is a notoriously difficult food commodity to process and preserve due to its susceptibility to enzymatic and non-enzymatic degradation. As a result, avocado flesh is rarely used as a seasoning due to its tannin content, which imparts a bitter taste when cooked. However, sancocho, a traditional Latin American meat and vegetable broth, is still often seasoned with avocado, which adds a unique flavor. Regardless, pulped avocado is most susceptible to enzymatic browning due to its relatively abundant and catalytically active polyphenol oxidase content. When making guacamole, phenolic compounds stored inside the avocado cells are brought into direct contact with extracellular polyphenol oxidase and oxygen. Polyphenol oxidase will then catalyze the oxidation of O diphenols with oxygen to form O quinones, which polymerize into brown pigments. Over just a few hours, enzymatic browning ruined the taste, texture, and appearance of the condiment. Luckily, since the optimum pH and temperature of polyphenol oxidase is 7.5 and 20 degrees respectively, the shelf life of commercial guacamole may be increased by utilizing acidic lemon juice, vacuum packaging, or refrigeration. Additionally, high pressure processed guacamole exhibits a significant reduction in polyphenol oxidase as well as lipooxygenase and microbial activity with minimum effect on sensory quality. In commercially refrigerated guacamole, sodium bisulfate and ascorbic acid additives are frequently used as reducing agents which slow enzymatic browning by reversing the oxidative activity of polyphenol oxidase. In recent studies, pyenol complexed with beta cyclodextrin to improve water solubility and thermal stability displayed a significant inhibition of polyphenol oxidase. As a result, this compound would make an excellent guacamole preservative as pyenol possesses multiple health benefits, while beta-cyclodextrin is known to stabilize desired fragrances, flavors, and essential oils. Hot sauces are another stable Central and South American condiment or seasoning, which are made from pasted or fermented peppers belonging to the genus capsicum. As with guacamole, traditional Latin American hot sauces vary widely from region to region depending on the cultivation conditions and the pepper species available. For example, hot peppers belonging to the species capsicum picatum are used to make aji sauce in Andean countries. Likewise, chili sauces made from capsicum annum originate from northern Mesoamerica and are now heavily incorporated into traditional Asian cuisine. The overall spicy or pungent flavor associated with hot sauce is induced by capsaicinoids, which are vanilla amides of fatty acids created by chili peppers. When consumed, these chemicals bind to vanilloid receptors on the tongue's surface, causing the sensation of heat. Consequently, the pungency of hot sauce can be ranked based on its concentration of capsaicin, the most potent capsaicinoid, using high-performance liquid chromatography. I'm Yichen. I will bring you to the last station of this circular navigation the North American. This list shows one of the most popular condiments in North American, and the one I'd like to introduce today is barbecue sauce. Barbecue is a common food that can be found in most of countries. The area of the United States known as the barbecue belt house for four distinct barbecue traditions in those four areas. Carolina, Texas, Memphis, and the Kansas City. The photo shows typical barbecue in those areas. The barbecue is closely related to culture of North American, which can also make barbecue sauce as one of the most popular sauce in this area. Most American barbecue sauce can trace their roots to a sauce commonly in eastern region of North Carolina and South Carolina popularized by African slaves. Barbecue sauce is used as marinade, basting, condiment, or topping for meats cooked in a barbecue. Barbecue cooking style includes pork, beef, beef rib, and chicken. Nowadays, the normal barbecue sauce you can buy in supermarkets contains certain recipes, includes vinegar, tomato paste, or mayonnaise as base, liquid smoke, onion um, powder, spice such as black pepper, and sweeter such as sugar. It can be made at home. However, the original one was made by only three simple ingredients. It includes vinegar, salt, and pepper. 
The origin of barbecue sauce is created by the first American colony in 17th century. Then, soon after, German board brought the mustard sauce to North America. Mustard barbecue sauce is created and sold in early trays. In 1909, George Barbecue Company has been established. This is the sign of early commercially produced barbecue sauce. Hence, exists as most as the first company that trace barbecue sauce as major product in 1940. The quality of barbecue sauce elevated rapidly during World War II, when high quality sugar and more ingredients are used during the production process. This introduces a new re- concept of mustard barbecue sauce. As the German introduced mustard to original recipe of barbecue sauce, the mustard-based barbecue sauce and the normal tomato-based sauce has become more and more different from each other. Mustard barbecue sauce is a yellow-colored sauce that's made by mixture of mustard, vinegar, sugar, and spice. Unlike tomato-based sauce that has a thick and Sweet flavor mustard-based sauce has a savory tart flavor that can match well with the sweeter taste of barbecue pork. It is popular especially in central portion of South Carolina and the part of North Georgia. While tomato-based one is well developed in Kansas and Texas. Here's the references I used for my part. Thank you for watching. All right, so that wraps up our presentation on the condiments and seasoning. We hope you enjoyed and find something as interesting. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and good luck on the rest of your semester. Bye.